Welcome to another edition of the Gridiron Report. I'm Jared Johnson, and man, spring ball is almost upon us. Uh, we're within a week now of, uh, of Texas Tech spring ball returning, and I can't wait. And to that point, I've been uh, previewing the roster, position group by position group, and we've uh, finished the offense. Got quarterbacks, receivers, running backs, tight ends, offensive line. Now it's time for the defense, and they're bringing back a lot of the starters, a lot of veterans, and it starts all you know up front with that defensive line. You know, look, the way, for in my opinion, the way you got to look at Texas Tech's defensive line is their primary objectives are to to play their gaps, know their their role in, in their gaps. Sometimes it's two gaps, sometimes it's just one gap depending on the play and the scheme and everything. But and then to hold up blockers so that these athletic linebackers can run around the field and make plays. And they've done a really good job of that. And they're bringing back some guys who've been in the program now for years, some returning starters, some guys I really like. Let's start off there's you know, they play three defensive linemen at a time. But there's four guys that really make the core of this uh, defensive line that I want to talk about. And to me, it all starts with two guys, actually. And that is Jalen Hutchins and Tony Bradford. And Tony Bradford is, just personality-wise, one of my all-time favorite uh, Red Raiders that I've covered. Just very serious. A very It's one of those guys that's just really solid. Like, if he's in your neighborhood, you feel better. You feel safer. You feel better about just people in general. I'm just a huge Tony Bradford fan. But he's also like one of the last guys you want to like see in a dark alley in terms of you just didn't know him as a stranger and you saw him, you'd be like, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, even the toughest guys are guys that aren't ones that, you know, run from a fight. We'd be like, mm, I don't know about this one. Uh, Tony Bradford is a, is a very good football player as well, very good team player, very good student, all that, wants to be – uh, J. Edgar, well, not J. Edgar Hoover, but he wants to be an FBI agent at, at some point. Um, but, you know, he's he's been in the system now. He's, he's been a starter. He's a very good football player. Jalen Hutchings, I mean, he's a guy, his junior year in high school, ran for like 750 yards and 12 touchdowns. He's very athletic, was a good basketball player too. But now he's, you know, 6'1", 300-something pounds. He's a good nose tackle. He's perfect in this scheme. Um and he's a guy who climbed up the depth chart really fast. As soon as he got, he tore his ACL playing basketball his senior year in high school. Uh, it took him a while to get back, but as soon as he got healthy and really going, that I, he was the like unquestioned starter there, um, even over some pretty good veterans. So those two guys are your rock, your solid, you know, solid uh, front defensive front for you. The guys you really depend on. Uh, I tell you what, another guy who really impressed me. Now, statistically, he didn't produce a lot, but he was always in the backfield. And when he wasn't in the backfield, he was always commanding and stonewalling double teams. I mean, he's a big reason why um, you made any of the plays you made, the linebackers behind him, Tyree Wilson. And I want to make sure I get his measurables right because he is a giant human being, six foot six, 280 pounds, and he's not fat at all. Uh, he came in. He's a former four-star guy, transferred from a &M. He's only a he's a sophomore. He's only a sophomore, so he still has three years of eligibility. And a lot of these guys, I mean, you look at uh, who I mentioned before. Hutchings is only a sophomore, uh, and Bradford is only a sophomore. So I mean, these guys could be around for a long time. This could be your star defensive line for a long time. I really like Tyree Wilson. He's a very good player. He wrecked. Uh, UT's offensive line when in, in his uh, debut performance, he was almost unblockable that game. And there was other moments where he was, you know, like I said, very good in holding up blockers. Another guy I am really anxious to see get back because he was on his way to having a really good year last year is Nelson Mabanasor. Um, injury cost him most of the season last year, but he's supposed to be 100% healthy. I, I think he's. I don't know if he's going to be limited in spring or not, but I expect him to be a big part of what you do. Uh, he can play defensive end. He can play defensive tackle there. So he can play either Tyree Wilson or uh, uh, Tony Bradford's uh, position. Um, and I think he's going to push for, I don't know if he's going to push to start necessarily, but he's going to push for a lot of snaps. Maybe a 50-50 type thing there or so with him because he's that good. Nelson Bamsworth is a, a very good football player when he can stay healthy. So I know that uh, Coach Randolph was really excited about uh, his development, so I can't wait to see, you know, him coming back from injury. You know, Devin Drew actually, I think, outperformed. You know, he's a six foot two, two hundred and eighty pound defensive tackle, defensive end. I think he outperformed my expectations. He made some good plays. He played well. He had to play a lot last year. 
Um, and they were exploring to play some, but he had, to, he had to play a lot because of injuries. They were so beat up on the defensive line at one point uh, last year. Uh, but he, he made some plays. He definitely held up um, against the run. And uh, I'm interested to see what he's going to be like after a year in the program because I think he really helps. Without him, you feel worse about their depth. I, but I, I like Devin Drew a lot. A couple of other guys I'm really anxious to see, younger guys, L.B. Moore. He was a guy that just needed to you know, get to the training table and eat and get with David Scholes and, and, and uh, you know, hit the weights because he was kind of a tweener. But they knew with his frame, he's got huge mitts, um, they knew with his frame that he could he'd be able to put on weight. And I want to see what he's listed at. Uh, so I want to tell you exactly where he's at. He's 6'3", 240. So he still needs to come on a little bit of weight, but he's so athletic. He's a really good football player that he's going to play some defensive end for you. And uh, this year, you know, Coach Randolph told me he really likes LB. Uh, he's just a dang good football player, very violent. Tech could use some more of that, and uh, he's going to play. Uh, Gilbert Ibenemy, another guy. He just can't stay healthy. He hurt his knee, you know, knee injuries, shoulder injuries. He was having a very good, I think, fall camp uh, before the injury bug got him again. So if Gilbert can stay healthy. He was a former four-star guy before he went down with that knee injury in high school. So um, they have some some talent. They have some guys that, if you notice, you have a handful of guys that are like feel rock solid. Like these guys are really good, and then. There's a handful of guys where, like, if they can stay healthy, the injury bug, you know, that kind of thing. So you wish there was maybe a couple more guys, that you veterans, that you felt like, all right, I know I know this guy is going to be healthy and he's going to be solid and, and be there. But, uh, you know, I tell you, Philip Bleedi is – he played as a true freshman a lot last year. Part of it was just necessity. They need him to. But um, he's, he's physically able to do that. You didn't notice him get, like, rolled up or pushed around. Philip is a strong dude. So – I mean, you feel pretty good about that core coming in, you know. And then you got uh, uh, you know, coming into spring ball. Then you got coming into the program this summer, three defensive linemen, uh, highly rated guys, two of them. Marion Banks was a guy who made an offer from Oklahoma. All You know, basically the entire Big 12, he chose Texas Tech. Charles Esters, uh, he's more of a defensive end. And Marion Banks is more, Duda Banks is more of a kind of defensive tackling. He played defensive end as well. And, Charles Esters is your uh, classic pass rushing defensive end, uh, you know. And then who I'm anxious to see, and I think he's going to take, he's going to need a couple years to develop. But uh, Isaac Smith, he's he's listed at 6'5", 235 pounds. He could really run. I think he could play defensive end and defensive tackle at some point. Right now, he's a little light to play defensive tackle, especially in this game. But uh, I think down the line, you're going to hear from Isaac Smith. Uh, he's out of Wagner, Oklahoma. Helped him win a state title. Uh, he's a really good football player, really good athlete. He's one of the fastest guys in Oklahoma in track in his classification. and uh, Just a, a really good athlete there on the defensive line. So a lot of potential. You're bringing back some veteran guys. You're bringing back some guys you, you feel good about if they can stay healthy. And then you got the young freshman coming in. So there it is. I mean, in my time here covering Texas Tech, this uh, you know it's been eight years. Uh, this is about as good as I've ever felt about the defensive line in terms of talent, uh, returning experience, um, depth, all that. Now, is it where they want to be, the coaches staff? Ultimately, probably not, but it's pretty good. By It's better than, like I said, it has been an almost the better part of a decade for Texas Tech in terms of uh, defensive line all the way around. So this is not a weak point for the Red Raiders. This is something they, they need to improve, don't get me wrong, but this is a position that I like uh, on this roster at Texas Tech, and I think it's a position that if, if they stay healthy, for the most part, can improve throughout the season, definitely throughout this offseason. So up next, we'll talk about linebackers, which is truly a strength on this team. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, and until next time.